Hey everyone, this is Video Boy, and welcome to part 2 of the LidGDX 2D game development tutorial series. So, for this episode, we're going to talk about image loading, a bit of variables, a bit of control input. I'm going to start off by showing you how the GitHub works, so you guys can get the code from the last episode, so you can follow for the episode you're watching. So this is the GitHub page. I'll put the address in the video so it's much bigger, you guys can see it. Um, so basically here, you can just get the code from the last video. So right now the code for tutorial 1 is up. So you can just download it and make sure you have a nice updated build so you can follow along with this tutorial. If you want to see if there's new updates to the code, you can uh, watch it, you can star it, and you can up, uh, keep updated with it. Also, if there's errors in the code, you can report issues. Uh, but I'm not going to accept people sending code for this. Um, so it's just for you guys to get the code, not to contribute to the project. So I'll show you how to load it up in Eclipse. So in Eclipse, I'll just close that. Uh, you want to go into Window, Show View, Other. And then you go into the Git section and do Git Repositories. So you click that, okay, then it adds it here. So now what you want to do is you want to clone it. Cloning is when you have a remote Git repository and you want to copy the code onto Eclipse. Okay, so go back to the web page for the repository. Uh, it's being a bit glitchy. <laughs> uh, just click this button, it'll copy it to the clip clipboard. You get the link to it, the URI, paste it in there. You don't need to uh, have a login. Login is just if you want to add code to it. But since you guys are just downloading it, you don't need a login. So let's click Next. Next. Then you want to choose the folder you want to download it into. Pick whatever folder you want. And finish. Okay, so now it's going to download. All right, it looks like it's done downloading. So now you're going to have the repository here. You can go in the working directory, and you can see all the files for it. So in the Project Explorer, if you left off from the last tutorial, you probably have some projects. I would suggest you delete it. And when you delete, also hit the checkbox so that it deletes all the project files also. Since you're cloning the Git repository, you're going to download them anyways. So just in case you messed up a little thing on the last tutorial so it's not exactly like mine and you try to follow in a later one and something doesn't work because we have different code, well then this will make sure that we have the exact same code. So you want to do the Gradle import like on the last episode. So you do import, Gradle, and Gradle project. And you find the folder, so you browse to it. For me, it's saved in Video Boy Git the GDX tutorial. And do build model. Okay, so this should look familiar if you saw the first episode. So it's done building. You just click that, finish, and it's going to download all the dependencies and everything and create the projects. All right, it looks like it's done with Project Explorer. It's all there, all perfect. Now, next time you do this, you don't have to clone the repository again. If you want to download the new code, just go here, right-click on the repository, and you click Pull. So right now it says there's nothing to pull because everything's up to date. But if there's a new update to the Git repository and I updated the code, it'll just download it and you'll have the new code. You won't need to import again with Gradle. Okay, so now we're where we left off on the last tutorial. So, you guys might remember I showed you that you can run the project like this. And you get a default libgdx project with uh, that libgdx logo. All right, so you get this. Uh, so we're going to edit this project a little bit. We're actually going to use the libgdx logo just for the starting 
tutorial. Uh, and then later on we'll actually start making our own game. So for the game I decided that I was actually going to make a space shooter. Some of you guys suggested to make a game like Archipelago. But I thought since that this tutorial is going to be very beginner we should start with a beginner kind of game. And space shooters are pretty simple and I think we can get one done in I'd say under 15 tutorials. And then after that we can go for some more complicated stuff. But for this episode, what I have planned is uh, just some basic controls and image loading. Oops. Well, that was a bit glitchy. <laughs> um, Alright, sorry, having some technical difficulties there. Okay, so now you have this. So I'm going to go through how libgdx runs the program. It's very simple. It made it super easy for us. So you have this main class, which is um, just like a set of code. You can think about it that way for now. So when the program starts, it runs the create method. So then in the create method, you create a new sprite batch. That's for drawing images. And also it gets a new texture called badlogic.jpg. So the textures can be found in Android and assets. So they just do that because it's a bit simpler when you build with Gradle to have the assets folder in Android. Uh, so you can see the badlogic.jpg folder uh, image is there. So that's where it loads the image from. Um, and then it runs render at every frame. So depending on the frame rate, if the person has 60 frames per second running on the game, it's going to run render 60 times per second. Uh, by default, libgdx has an FPS cap at 60, so it doesn't go more than that because you don't really need more than 60 FPS. Uh, since most monitors only support 60 frame uh, refresh rate anyways. Uh, so the first line here is just an open GL line to clear the screen of a certain color. Uh, the next one I think does kind of the same thing. It's a little bit more complicated. I won't explain that. Uh, and then you see this. So you have batch.begin and then batch.draw and batch.end. So batch.begin tells the GDX that you're going to start drawing images to the screen. And batch.end means you're going to stop. So as you can see in the middle, batch.draw, that means you're drawing an image. So the image you're drawing is the variable uh, uh, texture object called IMG. And that is set to the bad logic logo, which is drawn at the coordinate 0, 0. So that's at the bottom left corner. So just say we do for a test, we change it to 50, and we run. As you can see, we moved over the X coordinate by 50, so it's not at the bottom corner anymore, it's shifted over a little bit. So, but this is where programming gets interesting and where interactivity comes in. So just say you have some float variables. So float variables are decimal numbers. So you have many different type of number variables. You have integers, which are non-decimals, and they could be negative. Uh, you have float which is decimal and you have double which is a more accurate kind of float and there is a whole bunch of other ones there's long and short but those are pretty much float and int are pretty much the only ones you really need to know they're uh, more accurate and are bigger than we need for at least for what we're doing okay so you create two variables x and y I'll actually put them on separate lines so we'll just it's a bit easier to read Okay, so these will now hold the coordinates of where we want the image. So we set the X for the X of the image and the Y. So by default when you create a variable, the default value of it is zero. So now if you run, it's going to put the image at the bottom left of the screen. Just like that because the default value is zero. Images are always drawn from the bottom left, unless you tell them differently. 
but that's uh, more parameters. We'll explain that once you get into more complicated stuff. You can actually choose where you want the image to be drawn from, and there's rotation and things like that. So now we'll add some controls into the game. So libgdx has some nice uh, ways of testing to see if different keyboard controls are being pressed. So we'll create an if statement here. So if statements check if a condition is true. So what we're going to do is use gdx.input.iskeypressed. Oops. So this asks GD, uh, libgdx if this keyboard key is pressed. So then if you want to specify the key, do keys dot I think I may have misspelled that. Oh, I forgot to turn on code recommendations. Okay, and it gives you a whole list of all the different keys that are possible. Well, pretty much any key you can think of. So we'll just do the up arrow key. So that is capital letters up. Okay. Uh, one thing with Java is that you have to import uh, when you're using different things like this. Uh, so the shortcut to import, if you don't want to bother with choosing, well, you have to choose anyways. Uh, you can do Control Shift O, the letter O, not zero, and it'll do it automatically. But for this one, we want to choose the com.badlogic.gdx.input. Okay. So if the person presses the up arrow key, it's going to run the code that we write in this line here. So when the person presses the up arrow key, we want their Y coordinate to go up, right? So we can do Y equals Y plus four. So what we're doing here, there's actually many shortcuts to doing this, but I'm just writing it this way so you can understand the logic behind it. So now you're setting Y as itself plus four. So you're adding four to its coordinate. So now it should actually go up when you press Y. So let's test it out. And we'll add the other arrow keys after, just to see if up works first. All right, I had some sort of weird bug when I ran it. Uh, it's just probably something going on with my computer. Don't worry about it. I'll run it again. Okay. so. Game runs, press the other arrow keys, doesn't do anything, but if you press up, as you can see, it goes up. And it's gonna go up on and on and on because we didn't set, sorry about that, my computer is being really weird right now. So it goes up on and on because we didn't set any collisions for if it goes off screen. So now let's add the other controls real quick. So else if gdx.input.is Key pressed, keys, dot, no, we'll do down next. I'll explain in a second what this line does. So else is what you do if the first one isn't true. So if the up arrow key is true, uh, do this. But if it's not true, do this. So you can actually do else without this if statement. So else do this line of code if the condition's not true. But else if is just kind of like a shortcut. So if it's not true, then check this condition. So actually right now what I'm doing might not be the very best because you can only press one control at a time this way. And up is always going to be prioritized over down and left and right. Uh, but we can change that later on. So when you do down, you want to minus the y by 4. All right, so now we'll do left and right. Oh, actually, I just noticed an error with my last line. It's not exactly like the first one. 
as you can see here, you might have noticed that um, Eclipse automatically corrected it to is key just press. So the difference between that and is key press is is key just press will tell you if the person just just pressed the key uh, before the the last uh, loop. So if they if it's the first time they're going through render and the key was pressed, it's going to set this as true. Um, so it'll tell you if they pre they just just press the key since the last time you came around to check. Uh, so we don't really want that right now. You'd want to use that just say for like a shoot button. So every time the person presses the key and they just pressed it, it'll shoot a bullet or something like that. But since it's movement, you want to know if it's being pressed at that instance always to move the well, the box and with the image in this case. Okay, so left, left you want to remove X, well not remove, but minus from it. All right, so, oops, the new capital letters. Generally for things that are uh, constants like this, the convention in uh, Java is to do capital. All right, so you want to add to X. I'm going to do four. Okay, so let's try to run this now. So remember before I said you could only press one at a time? We're going to see that now. So if you copied the code just like I did here, you're going to see that if you press in any other direction but up, and you hold it, and then you try to press up, it's going to prioritize up. You don't really want that. Also, you can't move diagonally this way either. So it depends on the kind of game you want to do. Some games you would prefer that. But I'm just going to remove the else's here. Okay. I'm going to rerun it. And you'll be able to see we can go diagonally. There's no priority. And it seems to be working good. All right, I'll show you a little quick shortcut so you don't have to do this whole line every time. There's many shortcuts in Java and many other programming languages. So if you want to add to a variable, you can do plus equals four instead. And it's going to add four to it. I just did that to show you guys the logic just so you can understand it a little bit and know what's actually going on. And there's also one other thing that's uh, you, some of you may have noticed, especially if you're more advanced and you've already done some game development, is that just say this person's game is running at 30 frames per second, that means 30 times per second they're adding 4 pixels to their coordinate. But if someone's game is running at 60 frames per second, they're going to be adding 4 pixels at 60 times per second. So that kind of has an error, so if the person's running at 60 frames per second, their character is actually going to move a lot faster than the person running at 30 frames. So that's where a concept called delta time comes in. And uh, this video is already getting pretty long, so I'll talk about that next week. So next week I'll talk about delta time. And I'll also get into a couple other concepts. So thank you guys so much for watching. Next tutorial will be next Tuesday. And also there's a devlog this weekend, so make sure to catch that. And I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.